Hey guys, Laura here with STP. Are you taking the June SAT test? Well, you're in luck and you've come to the right place because I'm a test prep coach with 17 years experience and I'm constantly analyzing the trends and what College Board is testing. And in this video today, I'm gonna to give you my predictions on what I think is gonna be on this June test. So stick around and this video is definitely gonna help you feel more ready and more prepared for your upcoming SAT. All right, before we get into my predictions, this video is brought to you by Preply, the first ever digital SAT prep app that's available in the App Store and in Google Play. Preply has over a thousand exclusive questions in both the English and the math that really mimic College Board's real questions on the SAT. So if you need to boost your score and you prefer doing um, some daily SAT practice where you just do a little bit each day, Preply is a perfect casual prepping experience and you can access it from the palm of your hand, right from your phone. So if you haven't gotten it yet, join the 40,000 other students who've already downloaded the app. I'm gonna go ahead and link it up here right now and put it down in the description. Guys, just a heads up, these 10 predictions I have for you are in a document and I will link it down in the description so you can work through the questions right along with me. See if you get the answers before I explain it. All right, guys, let's get into my predictions. I have prediction number one, which is a tricky linear problem. Okay. So let me just preface this by saying that this would be like number 15 or above on module two. So when you're on module two and you're already that high in the numbers, if it looks like it's supposed to just be an easy linear equation, it's not. You are going to actually have an answer that has numbers in it that you might not even see in the problem sometimes. But at the end of the day, it won't be what it seems. Okay, so let's read this problem. We have the cost of renting a backhoe for up to 10 days is 270 for the first day and 135 for each additional day. Okay, so 270 is the first day, so I'm gonna put that up front. Now when it says 135 for each additional day, I need to actually do 135 times X minus one. Why? Because we need to take out the first day. The first day was already accounted for here. So if they said 135, or sorry, if they said 270 for the first 10 days, then we would do X minus 10. So whatever they say the number that's the constant is and how many days it is, you need to take that away from X later. So then when we go to simplify and we distribute, we end up with 270 plus 135X minus 135. And then when you combine like terms, you end up with 135X minus 135. So definitely not what you would expect reading the problem initially, but the answer to that one is D. So be ready for that. My second prediction of what I think will be on the June is I think they are going to yet again test semicolons where they're separating items in a list. So if you get to a grammar question on the English, and you notice that there's a semicolon already in the sentence, then pick an answer with the semicolon because they are separating items in a list. All right, my third prediction is you're going to have a tricky exponential functions problem. So they're testing exponential functions on every single test, but what I've noticed lately is they're throwing more and more curveballs. So let's take a look at this one and I'll show you what I mean. It says a function P models a population in thousands of a certain city T years after 2005. According to the model, the population is predicted to increase by N percent every 18 months. What is the value of N? Okay, so 18 months. Well, what is 18 months? First of all, we need to know that T is in years. And let me take a step back just so that you can know what um, all the parts of this are because they might ask you to interpret a different part. The 290 is the initial amount. So that's what the population was originally. This 0.04 is the rate, so it's a 4% growth because it's above one. If it was less than one, it would be a DK. And um, the four six, I don't really know yet, right? Like that's new to me, so I wanna figure that out. Well, I'm gonna put 18 months in for T, but I know T is in years. So if I was gonna convert 18 months into years, 
I know that that's basically 1.5 years, okay? Which is three halves of a year, okay? So when I basically throw that into the problem, what happens? Well, the four cancels with the two, the six and the three cancel out, and we end up with a exponent of one. So that means there's literally one iteration every 18 months. So it will increase by 4%. Okay, so just be ready for something like that. My fourth prediction is that you're gonna need to use a nonlinear regression at some point during your test. Now, the best time to use a regression is when you see a table of values and they're asking for something specific about the function. If you do it algebraically, it's gonna take you a ton of time and a ton of steps. So using Desmos and making a regression out of this is the way to go. Let me demonstrate with this example. So it says the table shows three values of x and their corresponding values of g of x, where g of x equals f of x over x plus three and f is a linear function. What is the y-intercept of the graph? Uh, y equals f of x in the xy plane. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Desmos and I'm gonna make a regression out of this. Now, the first thing that you'll see is a plus sign in the upper left corner. If you hit that and then you hit table, you can actually replicate the table. So we had negative 27.3. Okay, your next step with a regression is to make sure that you type in the equation that Desmos is going to use to process the information. So you can't use X and Y, you have to use X ones and Y ones, just a heads up. It's just like how the table has the headings as X one, Y one. You also can't use an equal sign, you have to use a tilde. Just take my word for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and write the equation Y one tilde, and then they said it was F of X, which is a linear function. So I'm just gonna do a line. Notice I put X one not x, and then it was over x plus three. Oops, I almost did it again. Okay, so I told Desmos what the equation is, and look at what happened. They popped out the y-intercept for me, it's 36. So when I look at the answers, it looks like the answer is going to be A. All right, my fifth prediction is that there will be at least one subject verb agreement question on June. There always is a subject verb agreement question. So just as a reminder, you guys, you can use the pronoun trick. Try he and they, and you want to pick the one that's different. I would say he is, they are, they have been, they were. So the answer is A is. So anytime you have verb tenses, as your answers, try this trick and you'll probably get the question right. Now, if the same pronoun works for all four of them, you're on a parallelism question, so then you have to look around in the text to see what tense everything's written in. If it's all in past tense, pick a past tense verb but most of the time it's gonna be subject verb agreement. All right, my sixth prediction is they're going to ask a question about standard deviation. And what you need to understand about standard deviation is more spread out equals a higher standard deviation. So if your data is more spread out, that will increase the standard deviation. Now they said, um, what value would decrease the standard deviation? Here's the set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick B because that number is already within the data. It's not making it more spread out. A and C would make that data more spread out and would increase the standard deviation. So go with something that's already close to the mean. All right, my seventh prediction is they will ask how many solutions are there? It'll be for a system or just one equation. If they just give you one equation and they wanna know how many solutions there are, break it up into two equations when you put it into Desmos, set them equal to Y. If you just type in one equation with an equal sign in the middle, Desmos is gonna go haywire. But this one is a, a two equation system. And there's two things working in my favor for me to think I should use Desmos. One, it's a system. Two, there's a constant A in the function. So I'm gonna type it in to Desmos, and if they're saying there's no solution, I already know I want those lines to be parallel and to never cross. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I have the equations in. Now I'm gonna move A until I get them to be parallel. 
Um, I'm going to go back to see if they said if A was, oh, I already know they want a positive value for A because I saw the answer choices. So I'm going to change my interval and make A bigger. And I know 75 was an answer choice and it looks like at 75, the lines are perfectly parallel. So the answer was A. All right, my eighth prediction is I think they will give you a question testing apostrophes placement. And I know sometimes this really confuses students. So I would say play majority rules and you can get the answer pretty much every time. So I'm gonna look at the variations of stories first. And I noticed these two are the same and these two are different. So I'm gonna stick with B and D. And then I'm gonna look at all the events and I noticed that these two are the same and those two are different. So B has the most in common with the other answer choices and it is the correct answer. All right, my ninth prediction is they will ask you a question that's called evaluating statistical claims. Essentially, they're gonna give you some kind of a study and ask what the study can be generalized to. They're gonna talk about like selecting a sample. So here's the thing, whatever the sample is being selected at random from is what you can generalize to. So you wanna look for the at random statement and it looks like it says a sample of 40 fourth grade students was selected at random from a certain school. Okay, so that means I can only generalize to the fourth graders at that school because they only selected from fourth grader, they only selected from fourth graders and they only selected from that one school. So I can't generalize to other schools and I can't generalize to other grades. So when I look at the answers, the answer is gonna be B, all fourth grade students at the school is the only generalization I can make from that sample. All right, my 10th prediction is that they are going to test you on the 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. It comes up on almost every test. So first things first, guys, if you see a square root of three somewhere in your math problem, I want you to think 30, 60, 90. Now, you should know the ratios of the side lengths, but if you don't, you can always click the reference table up in the right-hand corner. I see the hypotenuse is eight, so I know the x is four because the hypotenuse is two x. They said cosine of x is radical three over two. Now, cosine going from that angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is the square root of three side, and I'm gonna put a four in front of it since X is four. And then that means that this is just the four side. So what is the length of AB? Well, AB is gonna be four. Easy peasy. All right, guys, that's it for this predictions video. I hope you found all these predictions super helpful for you, and I wish you the best of luck on the June SAT. If you made it to the end of this video, Throw a crystal ball emoji in the chat so that I know you watched all the way to the end. I appreciate you so, so much. Until next time, guys, happy prepping.